He's not in the bathroom. He's not in his office. He's not in his bed. He's not in Big Blue. He's, He's not, not with the puppies. I don't know where Daddy is. Have you found him? No, I haven't found him. Have you checked in the bungalow? No, that's a good idea. Let's go. Can I help you? I didn't know where you were. Daddy, I didn't know you were in the bungalow. I do know one thing. It's time for Quarantine Sunday School! Week 12! Yahweh is God's real name. God is eternal. Yeah, I have no beginning or end. God is incomprehensible. He is more than we can fully understand. God is the creator, he made everything. God is wise, he causes everything to work out perfectly. Attentive, God constantly sees, hears, and acts in the world. God is happy, he delights in being God. God is almighty, he is all powerful. God is the provider. He meets the needs of all his creation. So God has the right and wisdom and power to do all he pleases. Self-efficient and God does not need anything. God is victorious. God always wins He gives up himself for the joy of others. God is omnipresent. God, God is everywhere, everywhere at all times. Welcome to week 12 of Quarantine Sunday School, boys and girls. We have a special guest here today. Our cousin Alex has come to visit us because we've got some birthdays to, that we're going to celebrate a little bit later. And cousin Alex is going to help us uh, learn this week's attribute. And what an exciting attribute it is this week. We have 10 clues to help us figure it out. And each person's going to have a different clue. And so let's go right now and find those clues, all right? All right, come on, boys and girls. All right, boys and girls, we're here with Bristol. And what is your clue? Mountains. Mountains and sky and lake. Hmm, aren't, is, aren't they so pretty? Now, do you know how much, how many gallons of water are in all the lakes in all the world? Do you know how many gallons of water are in rivers? No. How about in the ocean? Do you know how many gallons of water are in the ocean? No. Do you know how much these mountains weigh? No. Do you know how big the outer space is? No. Do you know how many stars are in the sky? Mm -mm. Those are all things we don't know. I don't know them. Bristol doesn't know them, but I know someone who does. God knows them. Uh, uh, in the book of Isaiah, chapter 40 and verse 12, God has measured the waters in the hollow of his hands. So in the, in, the, in the cups of his hands, he has measured the waters. And he's marked off the heavens with a span. He's enclosed the dust of the earth in a measure. And he's weighed the mountains. He's weighed the mountains on scales. And in the hills... And the hills in a balance. So this verse is saying that God knows about the water. He's measured it. In the, in the palm of his hand, he's measured it. And he's weighed the mountains. He knows how much they weigh. And he's numbered the stars in, this, in the sky. He knows the number of stars. He knows how big the outer space is. God knows all those things that we don't know. All right, that's our first clue. Let's go find some more, okay? All right, we're here with Bridgie, and she's got another clue for us. What clue do you got? A picture of a baby. Uh, not only any kind of picture. This is what we call an ultrasound. 
This is a picture of a baby inside a mommy's belly. All right? Does your mommy have a baby inside her belly? No, no she doesn't. Right? But mommies all over have belly have babies inside their bellies. And can we see those babies? No. We don't know what they look like. We don't know uh, we don't know what color hair they may have or if they even have hair. We don't know how many fingers and toes they have. We, we can only get a little black and white picture kind of like this. But you know someone who does know what the babies look like in mommy's bellies? God knows. In Psalm 139, verse 13, the psalmist says, For you, God, formed my inward parts. You knitted me together in my mother's womb. You know, boys and girls, God knew you before you were born. He knitted you together in your mother's womb. He knew what you were going to look like, and he knew how what color your hair is going to be, and he knew how much hair you were going to have. He knew how many fingers and toes you were going to have. He knew everything about you because he formed you together. That's an all-knowing God. All right, that's our second clue. Let's keep searching for some more, all right? All right, I'm here with Cousin Alex, and Alex has a clue for us. What's our clue, Alex? Hair. Hair? What, how did you get my wig? Where did you find this? You took my hair. No. Well, you know, let me ask you a question. Do you know how many hairs are on your head? I don't know. You don't know? Do you know how many hairs are on my head? No. No. Do you know how many hairs are on my wig? I don't know. No. But I don't know how many hairs. It changes every moment. You don't know how many hairs are on your head. Don't know how many hairs are on this wig. But I do know someone who knows all of those things. God knows them all. Matthew chapter 10 and verse 30, it says, But even the hairs of your head are all numbered. God, has e God knows so much, he's even numbered the hairs on our heads. That's a great clue. Thanks so much, Alex. Let's go find the next one. All right. We're here with Cousin Alex and Bridgie and... What's the clue? What clue do you, you two have? A tennis ball. A tennis ball. Hmm. Do you know what other little boys and girls are doing right now? No. No. Do you know if any of them are playing with tennis balls? No. Or maybe they're hitting balls? Or maybe they're running around? Do we know any of that? No. No. We don't know what other people are doing right now and whether they're playing with balls or not. But I know someone who does know. God knows. The psalmist says in Psalm 139, verse 2, You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You, God, search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Everything we do, the psalmist says, God knows. All right, boys and girls, we're here with Bristol. Bristol, what clue do you have for us? Things you say. Things you say. Kind of like, can I have two cookies? Have you ever said that? Yes. Yeah. How about, I love you, Mom and Dad? Have you said that? Yes. Yeah, these are things that people say. Now, do you know what you're going to say tomorrow? No. Or next week? No. Or next year? No. You don't know what you're going to say in those days, do you? You just know what you are saying right now. But I know someone who knows what we all are going to say. Tomorrow, next week, next year. God knows all of that. In Psalm 139 and verse 4, it says, Even before a word is on my tongue, O Lord, you know it all together. Even before I say a word, God knows what I'm going to say. He knows what we're going to say today, tomorrow, next week, next year. God knows all. All of that. God is all-knowing, isn't he? Mm -hmm. All right, let's go find another clue. Come on. All right, we're here with the birthday buddies, Blood and Brielle, and what clue do you have for us? What is this guy doing? I'm thinking. He's thinking. What is he thinking about? Gummy bears, ice cream, and candy. 
we know what this guy is thinking about. He's thinking about a birthday party for some birthday buddies, isn't he? But Blenna, do you know what Brielle is thinking about? No. No. And Brielle, do you know what Blenna is thinking about? I don't know. No. And do you do either of you know what Daddy's thinking about? No. What about all those kids out there watching quarantine Sunday school? Do you know what they're thinking about? No. No. Why? Because we don't know each other's thoughts. But you know what? God knows each of our each of our thoughts. In Psalm chapter 139, verse 2, the psalmist says, You, God, discern my thoughts from afar. You, discern means to know. God knows even our thoughts. Not only what we say, but everything that we think, boys and girls. God knows all of that. God is certainly all-knowing, isn't he? All right, we just got a few more clues, boys and girls. Let's go find them. Oh, Cousin Harrison, what are, you, what, are you, what are you doing? Well, I'm trying to unlock this door, but this key won't fit. Well, that's because that key doesn't go to that door. So where does it work? Well, that, that, that hey, that's my key. Oh. That's a secret what door this go, what, what door this key works. Oh. You know, we have secrets, things that other people don't know. Harrison, Cousin Harrison doesn't know what door this key works. But you know who does know? God does, because God knows all secrets. Psalm 44, verse 21. For he, God, knows the secrets of the heart. God knows everything, even our secrets. All right, we're here with the birthday buddies, and they've got a clue for us. What is your clue? Cake. Cake. Birthday cake. Birthday cake. How many birthdays have you had, Brielle? Five. And how many birthdays have you had, Lena? Six? Six birthdays? Do you know how many more birthdays you will have in your lives? I don't know. No? Do you know, Blenna, how many more birthdays you will have? No? Do you know how many more birthdays I will have? I don't know. No. I don't know. We don't know. But I know someone who does know. God knows. God knows all of our birthdays. In Psalm 139 and verse 16, the psalmist says to God, you saw my unformed substance. You saw me before I was even born. In your book were written every one of my birthdays, the days that were formed for me, when as yet there was none of them. So the psalmist is saying, even before I was born, God, you knew me. You knew when I was going to be born, and you knew how many days I was going to live, and how many birthdays I was going to have. That's an all-knowing God. What a great clue, birthday buddies. We're going to have to go find some more clues, all right? So come on, let's go. All right, we're here with the whole quarantine Sunday school crew, and what is our clue this time, Bridgie? A calendar. And what month is on that calendar that you're looking at? August. August, the month of August. Have we gotten to the month of August? No. No, that's some time in the future, isn't it? Do we know what's going to happen in August? Mm -mm. No, we don't know. We may be making plans for August. Maybe we're planning on going back to school in August or going to the beach in August. We can make those plans, but do we know if they're going to happen? No. No, we don't. We didn't even know we were going to have to have quarantine Sunday school, did we? Until it happened. Because we don't know the future. We don't know what's going to happen, how it's going to happen. But I know someone who does know. God knows. God knows all of that. The, um, the, in the book of Isaiah, chapter 46, and verse 9 and 10, it says, I am God, and there is none like me. All right? Declaring the end from the beginning and from the ancient times, things not yet done. So this verse is saying, I am God. There is no one like me. Why? Because from the very beginning, God knew what's going to happen at the end. He's declaring the end from the very beginning. So even at the beginning of time, when God created this world and you and me and people and animals, even in all of that, God knew what the future was going to be for each one of us. 
That's an amazing, all-knowing God, isn't it, boys and girls? That's exciting. All right, boys and girls, we have one more clue, and this one's in my office. So let's go there, all right? Hey, boys and girls, we are down to our last clue before we can reveal this week's attribute. And I have it right here. And it is God. Do you know everything there is about God? No, of course not. Can we learn everything there is about God? If we study really hard and we spend the rest of our lives to try to learn as much as we can about God, can we do it? Can we learn everything? Hmm, I think we learned an attribute about that. Way back at the beginning. Does anyone know of an attribute that says whether or not we can fully understand God? Yes, Susanna. God is incomprehensible. He is more than we can fully understand. That's right. God is incomprehensible. God is so great and so mighty and so powerful and so wonderful. He is more than we can fully understand. We can never fully understand everything there is about God. But do you know who can? Who can know everything there is about God? God can. God can know all of that. If we go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 11, it says, No one comprehends or understands the thoughts of God except the Spirit of God. God is the only one who can understand everything about God. So let's review, boys and girls. What have we been talking about? We have been talking about how only God can measure the, the waters that are on the earth and the weight of the mountains. Only God can number the stars. He has names for them. Only God knew us before we were born. Not even your parents knew you before you were born. God did, though. Only God knows the, ha the hairs on our heads. Only God knows what we are doing at all times and knows what everyone else is doing at all times. Only God knows what we say, what we're going to say before we say it. And only God knows what we're thinking at all times. And only God knows our secrets. And only God knows what number of birthdays we're going to have. And only God knows the future. And finally... Only God knows everything there is about God. So what does that mean? What is the attribute that God is the only one that knows all of these things? Is there anything that God doesn't know? Of course not. God knows everything. God knows everything. And we have a special word for that. And it's very similar to the word we had last week, omnipresent, where God is everywhere all the time. This week's word is God knows everything. God is omniscient. God is omniscient. Everyone say this word with me together, okay? Omniscient. Omniscient, okay? God knows everything. Everything he knows. All right? So let's say it with me. God is omniscient. God knows everything. What an amazing God we serve, isn't he? We have the almighty God, the attentive God, the provider God, the incomprehensible God, the sovereign God, the victorious God, the omnipresent God. This is the God that has chosen us and the God that loves you and the God who's watching out for you. And not only is he all of those things, attentive and almighty and wise and victorious, but he knows all things too. Isn't that just amazing that we get to serve a God who knows everything? Nothing can be hidden from him. I think that's just absolutely wonderful. And so what should our response be to that? A lot of this lesson I've read from Psalm 139, which was written by King David. And David's response 
to all of this knowledge of God, all of this greatness about God, David's response in verse 6 is, such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It's too wonderful. It is high. I cannot attain it. David is saying, it's so wonderful, I cannot understand it. Verse 14, so I praise you, God, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works. My soul knows it very well. So David is saying, your works are so great and so marvelous. They're so amazing. I can't even fully understand all of them. So I praise you because you have fearfully and wonderfully made me and your works are just so wonderful. And then in verse 17, the psalmist says, how precious, how just, I just love them. How much I love, how precious to me are your thoughts, O oh God. How much do I love your thoughts? How vast is the sum of them? How big are they? How many are they? So the response of to learning about God's omniscience, God's all-knowing, King David had the response of praise, saying, you are so wonderful, I can't even understand it. Thank you, God, for being omniscient. Thank you for being all-knowing. What an amazing God we serve, right, boys and girls? It is such a privilege to be able to teach you about him. Well, that's week 12 of Quarantine Sunday School. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something about God and that you stay close to him. So stay in his word, keep praying, and Lord willing, we'll be back together in Sunday School soon. Until then, God bless.